Come on. Okay, so I'm following um, these people, the Banks family, because I think that they may be part of our family, but I'm not sure. But anyway, this is, um, these are from some records that this come from the freeafricanamericans.com. Um, and, and it talks about the different uh, indentured servants that, uh, that were here that um, created a, a different race of people called mulattoes. So they, uh, we'll start with this one. Elizabeth Banks, born, say, 1665, was a white mm -hmm. servant of Major James Goodwin on June 20th, 1683, when she was presented by the York County Court for fornication and bastardy with a Negro slave. She was given 39 lashes and the term of her indenture was extended. She was apparently the mother of Mary, born in 1683, and Anne, born in 1685. Mary Banks, born in 1683, was called the mulatto servant of Martin Goodwin in York County Court on November the 24th, 1702, when she agreed to serve him an additional year for having an illegitimate child and bound her mulatto daughter Hannah Banks to Peter Goodwin until the age of 21 years old. So she had to be his servant. Now this child got to be his servant until she's 21 years old. Mm -hmm. Peter Goodwin was to provide her with three barrels of corn and clothing at the complete, uh, completion of her indenture according to the law. 21 years and he going to give her three barrels of corn and clothing at the completion of her indenture. No land. Right. On, Ju on uh, 23rd February 1703 to 1704, she indentured her oh. three to four month old mulatto daughter Elizabeth to Martin Goodwin and agreed to serve him an additional year for paying her fine. She was the mother of Hannah, born 1705, Elizabeth, born 1703, William, born 1705, and John, born, say, 1708. Now, see, them lashes didn't stop them from fucking the black boys, the Negroes, because they, they, they didn't have four more kids. Right. So you got additional servitude, but you also, each time you have one of these kids, your kids are become indentured servants too. So when we look at that, we think about that every slave came over here. Now we're talking about, first of all, Elizabeth Banks was a white indentured servant. Mm -hmm. She had sex with a slave that was considered to be a Negro. At this time, this was no chattel slavery. This was indentured servitude. So these black people, this white woman and these black men or whatever you want to call them, African, or because it could have been different people because a Negro could have been different people. Because we find that we had East Indians here, people from East India, not Africa. Mm -hmm. We had people from Egypt here. They had Moorish people here, which comes from North Africa, but they were free people. So And the people that was here. Exactly. Already. And the people that were here, the Indians that were brown, that they enslaved and classified them as Negroes, Negroes in 1862. Yeah. Sorry, 1682. All Africans and Indians were classified as Negroes. Okay, so getting back to it. So we didn't already talk about two people, so we're down to 1685 and Banks say 1685 was presented by the york county court on september 24 1706 for fornication she was living in southampton county now this is all virginia we, we're not talking about nowhere else in virginia and on july um, 12 1759 when the court ruled that she be exempt in the future from paying taxes James Brooks called her his housekeeper when he left her five cattle, half his hogs, personal property, and half his crop by his Southampton County uh, by his Southampton County will, which was presented in the court of March 1759. 
right, and that's where that happened. The court dismissed James Brooks Jr.'s suit against her on September 11, 1761, when he failed to prosecute, and his suit against her abated on August 13, 1762, when the sheriff reported that she was no longer an inhibitor of the county. On 10 December 1762, Brooks was fined five shillings for assaulting her. I know. Uh, she may have been the mother of Anne, born 1706. Hannah Banks, born 1702, daughter of Mary. Now remember, Mary was number two, born in 1683. Daughter of Mary was a mulatto bound into the age of 21 to Peter Goodwin. See, see, you hear this? It, it was, first it was James Goodwin, mm -hmm. then it was Martin Goodwin. These is all brothers, this is all family, so they passing these people back and forth. So, um, she was bound to Peter Goodwin on November 24, 1702 in York County. She may have been the mother of Mary or Ma, born in 1705. Elizabeth Banks, because see, back in these days, we used to use these names over and over again. Until we, this, this generation of people that we have now, we don't use the names over and over again. So you might have had 50 Bens in your family. Yep. You may have had a, a lot of people named Thomas, but you know, we, we've gotten Irma. away from that. Yeah, Irma, <laughs> that, yeah, that name, but I mean, you know. So Elizabeth Banks, born in November 1703, was the mulatto daughter of Mary Banks of York County. She was listed on the 20th December 1722 inventory of York County Estate of uh, Mary Reed. She was listed um, in the December 22nd. Oh, I read it. A mulatto girl valued at seven pounds. She may have been the mother of Mary, again, since so she named her daughter Mary, born 1724, and Elizabeth Banks, born 1727. Okay. So, as we see, each time that these people had um, children, they put the, or by, their children was because uh, they followed the condition of the mother. Their mother was an indentured servant, but she put them and they were in servitude until they were twenty one, not a not chattel slavery right. until um, when they start when they started making all these Negro laws and changing it to chattel slavery and chattel slavery for life. That's when they started bringing those Africans over. They, they was uh, prisoners of war. They were prisoners of war. They were convicts. They came in as convicts on convict ships. See, people think they looking for slave ships. They got to stop looking for slave ships. It ain't written on the side of the damn ship, slave ships. There was no slave ships. There were uh, ships cargo. that were cargo ships cargo. or ships that uh, transported convicts. Now, the cargo went different ways. So the cargo came in, which were the slaves that they probably were prisoners of war. The African kings were sending people over here. They were trading. People don't understand that Britain and Africa were trading before then. They, they, they didn't just go there and start taking people like, oh, we're just going to go. No, they were trading. And these African people were giving prisoners of war, their prisoners of war, to, to these British. They were bringing them here. And also probably some of their own people because they were in trade with them. Yeah. Also, you have Polynesians coming here. And so it's not just like one part of Africa or they, they came, they, they could have been from anywhere. And so some of these people then you won't be able to really um, trace back to a definite 100% spot. Right. So um, so when they're looking for these, these, these ships, they're boarding these slaves. When they left out, they took other stuff back with them. They took, um, they took cotton. They took rice. They took uh, one of the big things that they used to run in the Caribbean was rum. That was a big, big thing. And when they came here with the rum, um, you know, that's what they used to get the Indians drunk. They said that the Negroes loved to stay drunk. Now, was it the Negro Indian or was it the Indian Negro? Because that was two things. Mm. You know, because they, 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 it, it was it originally a Negro or was it originally an Indian? So that because you know that we was the first, you know, we made it with them too. So, th so we have to go back and stop reading these books that people put together that 
they put all of their opinions in to make us think a certain type of way as opposed to we looking at these government documents on these websites and their archives the british archives have the ship logs they have what they bought in who they bought in then you go to these plantation logs they'll have all the things that they had listed and then you could go to the manumissions the probate records the uh, the freedmen's um, the freedmen's laws when they when people registered as a freedman because if we're looking for I, I would say well chiefs say stay away from you know those um, the Dawes rolls and stuff like that because more than likely that won't apply to us anyway but you know the the thing about it is when we look at ourselves as an African American. We are not all the same people. We bunch ourselves all together, but we are a whole bunch of different daggone people. And so we don't know our roots because we're not telling each other. It's not getting passed to us generation to generation. We've lost that connectivity because we're in this matrix of working for the dollar. But back in the day, who was to say that it was all about the dollar? Because women used to stay home. If you look at the damn census, all you see is, Stayed home, stayed home, stayed home. You ain't never see the damn women was at work when you look at TV. I love Lucy. They stayed yeah. home. Even the white, the white women that, stayed home, another, the black women stayed that's home. That's another video. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we know what happened while women had to go and work. Yeah, but um, so so these records. Are they they it, it, when people really have to start looking at and get away from that idea of everything came out of Africa, nope. everybody came out of Africa. Because and, and, and we, I, and I won't even say that completely. What I say is that where do we get this theory from? Somebody came up with this theory because everything is theoretical, and that's and what that's, they teach us in school, right? It's, that everybody came from Africa on a slave boat. Well, That's I'm what not they even talk talking about. about. I'm talking about beyond that. I'm just yeah. talking about everybody came out of Africa. Like everything. life came out like of Africa. Like life came out of Africa. Because it's that totally, totally proven. I mean, some people have said that that's already been debunked. So I can't say whether that's true or not. All I can say is I'm trying to trade where my people came from. As See, people keep forgetting that can. at one time this whole planet was all the land was together, and, and that made and a, people was on that land. Right, it was one world community. It, I, I can't say about that. I'm not going to work on those those theoretical things because mm. it's like I mean, you just want facts. Yeah, I just want facts so you can see that. I mean, people. They, they talk about the, what they call the Pangea. They say theory. But, you know, I mean, you find stuff that these, these platelets do shift. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I mean, people are uh, estimating that Florida will be gone in, in centuries to come. And they say maybe as, as far as North Carolina, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, uh, Florida and South Carolina may be totally covered with water. The, pla uh, the planet goes through changes. Yeah. I mean, we they found where um, Cycles. places have un. Uh, water has receded, and they were like, "What? Where this land is like been buried for two, three hundred years?" You know what a sphinx said in Egypt at one time? It was water. Yeah, it was water. There. Yeah, I mean the Nile itself, the way that it used to, they used to know that the Nile would flood out to uh, be able to plant their crops. So we've lost a lot of knowledge, yeah. and we're just now starting to get our knowledge back. But the first thing we got to do is get rid of religion. Yeah. And once we start getting rid of religion out of our head, we start getting to back where we start getting that spiritual we start connection. Exactly. <laughs> we start thinking and stop being so fearful ourselves. about things that we can't see or explain. Because we don't know everything. Everything is theoretical. Yeah. So when you read these stuff, um, getting back to these books, the book, a Bible, that's a book. Because it says inspired by God, but man wrote it. So, okay, so when it It's just up, different writings. Exactly. That's why it's a lot of conflict. But it says in the Bible in it. itself that it's parables and allegories. So which is parables? And it said Jesus only spoke in parables. Mm -hmm. So if that means, what does that mean? In allegories. So, you know, when people take all of that stuff literally, literally. Yeah. then it's like, okay, that's when it becomes a problem. So you have these three religions. Major, Major that's causing all of these problems, but it's been at war with each other for thousands, hundreds of thousands of years, <laughs> based on but all of them basically have this one man that's still in it Abraham. Because the Muslims got Abraham, 
the Christians got Abraham, and the Jews got Abraham, but all three of them got a different story. Now, how is that possible? So we need to look at that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So whose story is the right story? Right. So, again, when people start writing these books, you know, and putting their... It depend, depends on their beliefs. Exactly. Yeah. So, and then you to look at that the Bible, that they say that the Bible has had books removed. I read one of the books that removed, it said Jesus was born in a cave. He was not born in a manger. Right. So, like, ew, people won't like that one. Be like, oh, Jesus wasn't <laughs> born in a cave. What the hell are you talking about? I read it. It said Jesus was born in a cave. And I mm -hmm. said, hmm, okay, so I guess that's where the, maybe the, uh, uh, the story of the uh, the Caucasians weren't they supposed to be living in caves? So maybe that's their beginning story. Right. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. But uh, so you know, getting back to this, so when we look at this information, it's a lot of information yeah. out there, but we just don't know how to find it. Yeah. And when we find somebody that's really giving us true information and not try to swindle us and saying, well, you should be sovereign, you're all Moors and they want to sell you information on how to do this, you know, or no, you're, um, you're, you're, what, what's the, it, it's so many swindlers on Facebook. Yeah. So, you know, you got to be careful. And even though, and, oh yeah, and then you jump on the, uh, the Amun Ra thing, all Egypt, all kings and queens. And, you know, we all, that's some bullshit too. Everybody in Egypt wasn't no damn king and queen. If somebody had to be the, uh, every in every class and every civilization, yep. they yeah, had upper the class. Yep. They had probably the middle class, yep. and they had the low class, the ones that was the service. And guess where the service was? When them damn kings and pharaohs and shit died, they was buried with them. Shit, no, I don't, I, no, I'm not praising you like that, that I want to be killed to die with you when you die or whatever the hell. Like, no, I mean, cows and jewelry and all that stuff. Come on, that's, see, but see, that's the way that people think. So when you don't think for your damn self and let people lead you around like this, yep. Like a boy like sheep. Ring. Exactly. Sheep. We, we Stop acting like a goddamn sheep and start reading shit for yourself. Check so, this out. What kills me with those pastors when they say, my flock, my sheep. You know what I'm mean? Like they the shepherd. Yeah. And then people feed into And they the shepherd. But you know what? This is the whole thing about uh, just like when we watched that movie Contradiction. That yeah. movie Contradiction was like, wow. That movie was so on point that they are actually trained. They're trained to uplift us to get to where we're like that. To get and, the entire emotion. Exactly. And the music. We are... I play music all day. Music is our thing. The drum. The drum affects us. The music affects us. So when you're in a church and you got this man that's up there preaching and they know how to lift us up. And yeah. that music lifts us up. And that spirit hits us. And then what we do? We start paying them tithes. We just and, tithes. and you know what it is? It's our own spirit. Exactly. Our, we feel in ourselves. Exactly. Our, our spirit is riled up exactly. because of the music. But you know what? To pay tithes in church is nothing but paying taxes. Yeah, that's all so it is. When we live on this planet, we work to pay taxes. Yeah. We work to we, we when you born on this planet. You are expected to pay. They give you a social security number. That's your tax ID number yeah. as an employee. So you ain't, you ain't can't get no damn job without that tax ID number. So when you're born, you get that birth certificate saying who you are. That's your bill of sale. Yeah, that's your bill of sale. <laughs> <laughs> and that tax ID yeah. number. That's the bill so, of sale. Because we're walking around here, we think we're free, but we are still slaves. Every I would say half the people on this planet are saying white people. Everybody's been fooled. Stop a lot of those. She is squeeze the dog, the cat up in the door. Everybody's everybody's under that. Because, it's just an illusion for the, that, that, that that's because been smart. we have to pay. Yeah. Because we have to pay. And the thing about it is when you look back in these old records right here, what they said with, with these they didn't call them taxes. When these people wasn't paying okay, so these people wasn't claiming their wives and stuff like that because mm -hmm. they had to pay tithes on their wives. So men used to hide their wives and say they weren't married because they didn't want to pay tithes on them. Well, we're paying tithes in church. So what's the tithe? Tax. But a tax. tax. So you're paying a tax to go to church, but they flip it around. And anyway, the tithes, when they say you should watch with a raw man, uh, God of his... Will it, a it, man rob God? Right. Yeah, ye have robbed me of 
of, of, of my tithes and offerings. Right, but it wasn't written for us. It, no, was, it was written, written for those priests. It was written for the priests and the pharaohs who wanted to have the daggone money. Yep. Now they didn't switch it around talking about some damn 10%. Because they never finish that scripture. <laughs> they never finish it. All they do is say, will a man rob God to try to make you feel guilty right. if you didn't pay your tithe. Right. But then if you go on, it says... Yeah, this commandment is for the priests and the Pharisees. Right, right. But they never go that far in church. Okay. And see, when we get back to this, you know, this the way that this, this society was set up, and I ain't even got into reading these slave laws, you know, we just talking about how when the white women made it with the Negroes, you know, they had to be in indentured servitude, too, for 21 years. You gone from being a child you just you born into slavery. Yep. You know what I'm saying? And then after your servitude is up, you free. They bought land. They, they you, it's, it's records of them slave. You know the slave masters actually leaving land to slaves, mm -hmm. to having children with slaves. You know. So this society, the way it is set up, is based on a bunch of lies because then they came in and started making these laws yep. where white women couldn't marry black men. Yep. Which, well, the black man was already mixed with the with the Indian anyway because they didn't already made all of them Negroes. Yep. It didn't matter where the hell you came from. Yep. If you came from Polynesia, if you came from Egypt, if you came from Africa. If you was if you already came, here. If you was, if you was an Indian that was already here, you was classified. And so once they did... The enslaved thing, you know, the enslaved Africans and Indians and classified all of them as Negro. Anybody else that came over and you was brown skin, you was automatically classified as a Negro. They even enslaved the Moors. I mean, and, and ran them out. Yeah, well, the Moors, I, I'm not even going to get I them. I know, but they was here too. Yeah. They was here that's too. That's what I'm saying. And the Berbers, yeah. yeah. So um, The Moors actually helped them set this joint up, and they turned on them. Like they did the Indian, they turn on everybody. Well, they even know, turn on themselves. Every treaty that the American uh, government has made with the Indian, they are basically broken. Yeah. So, yeah. I wouldn't trust anything that the government writes because they make <laughs> laws on top of laws on top of laws. Yeah. And all the laws and that they, they use make, them as a, conven a, a convenience. All the laws that they make are for themselves and their yeah. uh, and their and, and their um, constituents, to, which are the people, themselves. which are the people that donate political um, corporations. Yeah, exactly. So if a company like Monsanto contributes two hundred thousand dollars to your political campaign. You got to do them a favor. Yeah, so you're going to sign off with this bill saying, yes, you can go ahead and poison the people. Yep. And it's okay because, you know, I don't have to buy this crap because I can afford to buy the way shit. better stuff. I can buy yeah. organic. Anyway, getting back to this. Um, so they they make these uh, laws from the beginning. Once once they started making these laws that the Negro and the white person couldn't get married because we, we they had already they had created another race of people. It wasn't not just black and white. And so then um, when Britain decided they wanted to get rid of slavery, and they started making these uh, abolitionists start coming up with these things to try to promote anti-slavery. They created this image of this slave ship. They had these people packed in here, like back to back, sardines. like sardines, covering the whole ship, stacked on top of each other and stuff. That was a propaganda yep. to, to appeal to the hearts of the people to where they would be like, this is really wrong. Another propaganda that they did to appeal to the people was they put them the whitest mulatto children up there, dressed them all fancy and stuff. And these children was mulatto or, you know, they was they was light, bright, and damn near. You know, <laughs> but they still were slaves because they had to follow the law. the law, which was following, if your mama was a slave, then you was a slave. Yep. So, that was one of the, their things that they tried to do to get slavery abolished by having all these pictures and flyers and stuff made. They even went around, like, I think I read an article where it was like two twin sisters. They took them around, had them on display and stuff somewhere up north. Like, they're like the little white people like, oh, they could be our kids, you know? <laughs> so, you know, but we take that and say this is what, this was, was real. And then they try to say, so the, the slave trade never happened. So you got these people out here trying to say that the slave trade never happened. 
the, all the black people that's here or so-called black, because I ain't black. Shit, I ain't black, I'm brown. I don't know where the hell they get this black and white from. There's no damn black and white. That's a social construct, and it's... And it's, 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 it's political. That's it was it, it was it, it was created to create the uh the uh, create separation. Yeah. So you have two extremes, white and any damn thing that you see white 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 is always on the top, like it's number one. You can go through these records over and over again. You'll see white on the top and black under, or black or, or white or negro. But where the hell did white come from? Ain't nobody white. I ain't never in my life seen a white person. And until I went on Facebook, I didn't even know that this world was so goddamn racist. Be like, wow, y'all really, say, you know, and, it's, and, and, and I, 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 I understand, but to be the, the way that we are and try to be like, well, we need to go back. It's, it's no way to go back to the way that we were. No. It's too many people in this world. The best that we could do is if we tried to pull together and actually create something to our fun or something like that, because we need to get them damn Negro laws changed. Yeah. <coughs> We actually got to become a nation. We ain't got nobody looking at them damn Negro laws or addressing them issues, which I can't even talk about that shit right now because, uh, uh, you know, I mean, it's so many. It's, it's four chapters of Negro laws in South Carolina. We ain't talking about the Plantation Act, the Negro laws of Virginia. They just made, uh, I mean, four chapters of laws created for the Negro. Yep. And if ain't none of them laws been changed, then why the hell... Um, don't we understand that when them cops kill our kids and shit and they ain't going to jail, we like, oh, that's not fair. That's because we not pulling, we not reading this shit when somebody trying to tell us, yeah, y'all need to get up off of all of that Africa shit that y'all are studying about Egypt and knowing every goddamn pharaoh that ruled Egypt. We don't live in Egypt. I live in America. Niggas is getting killed every day over here by cops and getting getting uh, body cavity searches out in damn public and shit for some nigga smelling like weed. Are you serious? You know, we got all this shit going on, but we don't understand why this kind of stuff is going on. It's because they have created laws to protect themselves yep. and, and, and fuck over us. Yep. But we got to get together with the ching ching and start building. Yep. Start sending some damn lawyers to school. Start sending some people to the Supreme Court and change some of them Negro laws. Yep. And the only way that you ever get anything done is with some goddamn on money. And teach our children the truth. That's, and that's true. Bring because them over with the that, truth. Because, you know, when you, you know, these damn, this TV. Yep, get them off them, t- Roots. them TVs. Roots mm. was the biggest propaganda. Yes, and yes. we sat there and sucked all that shit in and it totally brainwashed yep, us. Yep. Then... These movies like The Passion of the Christ, which I never watched. I wouldn't, I would never. I, for one thing, it's like, you want to sit there and watch this man dragging this heavy cross. I was like, I seen the damn crime. I was like, oh my God. Why would anybody want to watch something like that? You know, these images that we watch on TV. It goes into your subconscious Exactly. Mind. All of these images, even the stuff on Facebook when we watch these cops beating people and stuff like that, I can't watch that stuff no more because it, it does go into your subconscious mind. It helps feed your fear. Yep. And it's that whole thing with religion it's like and, this. and these things on TV, they, they keep us in a fearful state yep. where we can't focus on ourselves and getting our shit together. We yep. be like, if you get rid of that religion, once I got rid of that religion, I got rid of almost every fear I had. Yeah. Almost, I mean, uh, that, whatever, that was my you, whatever thing. you focus on is what you put your intent on, so that's where all your energy is going. Yeah. So, if you're focusing on negative stuff, that's exactly what's going exactly. to come back to you. Exactly. If you're focusing on positive stuff and you're trying to, you know, make yourself feel good about life what and everything, that is? Oh, no. all right. oh. that, that's just it. You got to, you, you, them images mean a lot. That's right. why I just post positive exactly. stuff. Exactly. Exactly. I try to balance it out sometimes, for the most part, it's positive. So. But, but yeah, I mean, it's been a real learning experience for me. I mean, and it's like some of the things that I learned, I had to erase because it's like it's misinformation. Yeah. I mean, it's like some of the things that you get that you think is like, oh, my gosh, that is so good. People distort information. You have to reprogram yeah. your mind. Yeah, you have to. And it's not going to happen overnight. You have to reprogram. That means you got to get all that trash yeah. out. And, and put yep. everything that in. we was conditioned yep. to yep. believe. Yep. Yep. You have yep. to unlearn yep. what you was taught. Yep. 
And I mean, you know, I mean, it's just like when I um, when, when I started finally looking at those videos that you was telling me about that know, those, know thyself and stuff like that by Santos Fenacci mm -hmm. and really trying to understand what they were saying that religion really was about. Mm -hmm. And I'm not trying to say that it's 100% true. I'm only speaking for my personal experience. When I read those, like uh, John Jackson's um, book, uh, the, the, the Pagan Christ, um, about being about astrology and, mm. and, and, you know, and really starting to watch the stars and notice the difference in the, in the time and paying attention mm. to freaking nature. Yeah. You mean to tell me <laughs> that you, you're going to personify the stuff that's out there and made them people and we praying to... <laughs> Jesus, Son of God. Jesus. The Son. That's what yes. it is. The Son. And people don't want to understand that. They want to worship a being. Uh, exactly. The being is you. But, you know, I mean, it's just like, it's, so he's going back. So with this, when they came in here, and they, 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 they leaved up off of us a little bit if you became a Christian. Yeah. But see, they came here with the word. So... As a matter of fact, it's about the, about the 1600s that King James wrote his version. Yeah. So they come in here with this King James version. This is about the 1600s that I'm talking about right here. Mm -hmm. so the Old we, Testament? That's, that, huh? No. No, no that's the that's New the Testament. That's the New Testament. Yeah, the Old Testament go way back. And King James is where Jesus came in the play. Yeah. Because the Old Testament, they had Jesus in it. And they and never that, spoke his name once in that Bible. Exactly. And you don't see why, Jesus nowhere in the Old Testament. And that's why the Jews be like, eh, eh. No, 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 no. We don't play that. No, yeah. no, no, no. So, and, you know, but, um, so they, so, when they, when they came here, what it was like, if you wasn't a Christian, mm -hmm. then you was a slave. So, once we started becoming Christianized, you know, taking on Christian names because we had other names. When you became, and that's how they knew that you was a Christian. If you had a name like Irma instead of like Ufufu, <laughs> then you was, you was, you was a Christian because you didn't took on these Christian names. They gave you a little bit of slack, but they going to sit there and watch you and, you know, watch the church and make sure that the preacher getting trained right. You know, they made laws that we couldn't have with so many of us Right. They made all kinds of laws mm -hmm. to try to keep us intact. And what was the first book that we even do, introduced us to? The, the Bible. Bible. Of course it would be the Bible. Is that so coincidence? Okay, of course. And then at, the, at that time it had like pictures in it. Yeah. So they had the picture of the white Jesus. Yeah. So that it made that our God. The yeah. white man is our Lord. He's the master. Mm -hmm. Then this man is our God. And if you wanted to be a good slave, you would be a good Christian. If you wanted to be a good Christian, you had to be a good slave. Exactly. Yeah. Because it says in the Bible. Yes, it does. I've seen it. Exactly. And that's one of the, that was one of the problems that I had with the Bible in the first place. And when I started saying, why, why would God say it's okay that, we could, that people could be slaves? I mean, and not saying that and black people was the only slaves. Because slavery has existed. For, I mean, thousands of years they had people, but I'm saying as far as the, the, the slavery in this country, you know, that's what they gave us. So we don't know, and we didn't know anything about, I mean, may may or may not have known anything about uh, uh, a Jesus, and we were still in Africa, or if we was in Polynesia, or when we was in Australia, because that fucking 